Out there, so we're going to turn it over to you, and you're going to build, help us build the agenda for the rest of the day. All right, so um, let me explain how it's going to work. I'll give a couple sample pitches, and then we'll get right into the pitch process. So while I'm talking, there are some uh, pitch sheets on your table. There's markers. Um, if you have an idea, uh, what we want you to do is write write a title. Put your name on it, and we also have like a little indicator if you have a presentation you want to share. We're only going to have one um, track that will have the projector in the back corner here, so just know that we'll have limited limitations on that if you have a, a laptop with a presentation. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to line up over here, and uh, you'll everyone will get 60 seconds or less to do uh, one pitch. If you have multiple pitches, you will go to the end of the line as these two fine gentlemen in the front are already have multiple pitches prepared. Uh, they'll go back to the end of the line and then come back. When you're done with your pitch sheet, we're going to put them on the back table where we have the lovely uh, Tracy, our lunch uh, concierge, uh, and let the all things open. We're gonna line them up in a row, and when we're done with the pitches, what we'd like you to do is to kind of maybe line up on this side of the room and kind of form a line to go vote, and then you'll get directly in line with the taco bar. Okay. Do you need to mention anything about food right now? Okay, so what we're going to do is after you vote, the line, the single line of voting is going to fork into two lines for lunch. Absolutely. Got it. Both, both lines have the same food. Um, I'll have a timer up here. When the timer goes off, I'm going to kindly push you uh, this way, not off the stage, but towards off the stage, okay? Are there any questions? I'm going to give you a couple mock pitches so you kind of go, Ian. Yes, you are, if you want to time, that would be awesome. He is, this, this is like the bouncer timer guy, Ian Henshaw, over here from Code for Gary. If Bill Scanlon were here, Still here. No, Bill's still here. If Bill uh, Greaves was still here, sorry. You got all these Bills, all these Jasons, you know, all this open data. If uh, Bill Greaves was still here, he would tell you uh, one year we had this the most annoying sound at City Camp. And if you went at the time, it was like this dying moose. Like, and you did not want the timer going out. Okay, so 60 seconds or less. Uh, this is an example pitch. So you get up, so hi, my name is Jason. And my topic is open data in rural counties. If you'd like to discuss that, vote for my session. Really simple, right? Short and concise is really working. If you're going to get up here and ramble, we're going to kick you off. Just a warning, okay? I'll give you another one. And this is actually a sample that if someone wants to steal, you're more than welcome to steal it. I don't know if I'll have time to do a session on it. But, hi, my name is Jason. And I want to talk about how we can map the map, map Raleigh panhandling, they just did an update to the ordinance or a proposed update. I want to know how we can map the panhandling ordinance for policymakers so they can see where we can actually panhandle in Raleigh. And I want to develop that as a framework so we can use that for other policymaking. So if you want to steal that, I see Jim looking over me like, hey, how do you do that? Um, maybe we steal that. Cool. 60 seconds. See, I went right over. We're going to start clapping and moving up. So I, so I did two samples, so one really short, one where I kind of rambled, right? So um, now we'll start lining up. If there's, and we'll always be lining up. Uh, who's got, is there any other questions? I will say, uh, for first timers, the, the one thing I hear, I said this last night, the one thing I hear from folks who have never done this before is that I wish I would have done a pitch. So at the end of the day, when you've done all the sessions, you're like, oh, I wish I would have done this. So if you have an inkling of an idea of something that you care about, that you're passionate about, that you want to talk about, write it down, pitch it. If it doesn't make the board, that's okay. We have a hallway track. We'll have room for about 20 sessions. If it doesn't rain, we have an outdoor. We'll have four tables in here and a table outside. So we'll have five sessions going at a time. So we'll have maybe 20 to 25 sessions today. All right? Ready to get started? This is inspired by Eric from Asheville. I uh, want to discuss how to establish a Code for America ambassador program. We have talent. We need problems to solve. We need to reach out into the city and county governments that we supposedly support to find those problems at departmental level, city, county level, whatever. Hi, I'm 
I'm Jim Scarborough. You'll hear from me a couple of times today. Um, first pitch is for GitHub 101. If you have not done GitHub, if you don't know what GitHub is, please consider signing up for this one. GitHub is central to a lot of the sort of things that go on here, and I'm happy to help orient you to it. Uh, there's for the, for the voting, I made two sections down here, one for developers and one for everybody else because they're really two kind of different presentations, and depending on if we have enough to make it meet for both types, or if we have enough to make it meet for one versus the other, you can sign your name on either side of it. So, GitHub 101. Hello, I'm Janelle Bailey. I'm an Enterprise Data Manager for the Town of Cary. Much like any other municipalities, we have more data than resources. It is my job to actually find talent uh, we have tapped into the university programs, but unfortunately, we've lost all our Code for Carry memberships. So I'm here today to ask those of you that are in a Code, uh, a code for America Brigade to help us establish, rejuvenate our Code for Carry Brigade and help us recruit top talent and tap into this region's emerging data scientists and analytics. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Kevin Wright, and um, I my background is uh, I worked for a long time uh, in a company driving innovation, and I've also worked with a lot of. Uh, so my uh, what I'm here for is I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, what the previous uh, speaker talked about is how do you create value and what's important. And I've got a concept that I'm going to call it. Uh, how, what can we learn from hiring a milkshake? And how can that potentially transform not only your project, but how you create value in your personal as well as uh, any projects you make? So, the topic is how to hire a milkshake. Hi, I'm John with Code for Durham, and uh, I want to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly relationships between for profit and volunteer IT expertise related to civic tech looking for where things work, where there are tensions, um, how to try to help things work as best as possible. Hi, I'm Travis Bailey. My day job, I manage Dell's social media support program. Uh, my topic is on citizen engagement, uh, how you interact with your government, government interacts with you, and also how you can interact with your neighbors in your neighborhood through social media and online platforms. So I am Eric from Asheville, um, and Jason Marshall and I are going to co-lead a session called Code for North Carolina, Making It Real. Uh, Code for North Carolina right now is a GitHub project, a GitHub org, a Slack channel, and you know, some scattered collaborations. We see it as having a lot more potential, uh, and we'd like to talk about how to, how to, how to realize that potential. Hi everyone, my name is Tali Fart. I'm finishing a postdoctoral fellowship in building sustainability and transitioning to data science. And I want to talk to you today about sustainable energy networks. Big data and the internet things open amazing opportunities for cities to achieve energy and water efficiencies. When your network elements can talk to each other and adjust to each other, they can optimize performance, save a lot of money, and reduce environmental footprint. The challenge is that the ability of cities to take advantage of these opportunities 10, 20 years down the road really depend on the decisions that they make now. But on the other hand, those technologies are very young and there's a lot of uncertainty about how they're going to develop, so it's hard to make those decisions. So the question I'm proposing is, how can cities They'll develop their energy infrastructure today so that in the future they can make the most out of the, of the Internet of Things and related to them. Good morning. Uh, my name is Patrick McGarry, and uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the. Uh, oh, sorry, I thought they were. We're going to unlock the open data's network effect. Uh, so, there, by, depending on how you count, there are somewhere north of 18 million open data sets in the world. Uh, and I want to talk about how we kind of 
build the web of linked data by first kind of connecting the humans behind it all. So hopefully I'll see you there. Hey, uh, my name is Jason Baker, and I hate public hearings. Uh, public hearings are a great way to get input from people who have a ton of time, are really tuned in and know what the hearing is, and otherwise know how to play the local the game of local policy and zoning and development law. Um, there are a ton of tools that we could use to get uh, input from a wider range of people, but the challenge is how do we put that data that we collect on the same uh, pedestal level of data that is collected from citizens of the public hearings, and I want to talk about that with you all. Hi everyone, this is uh, Kanal. I'm from the Coder School. We are a small family operated business, and we would like to bring coding to the Wake County Schools. Over the past year, we have been educating uh, in both Cary and Raleigh about 500 students or more. Uh, we have a physical location, uh, and we would like to bring that uh, to all the Wake County School. That's our family's goal at this point. And, uh, uh, we would like to bring uh, all the ideas from the communities, how we can actually start to bring, uh, start to make the next generation digital um, enable. That's our goal. So, hope uh, you guys work for it, and uh, we, I can talk more about it. Thanks. Hi, my name is Chris, and I would like to talk about an affordable housing hackathon. Um, the challenge by my boss is to try to come up with an idea around that idea, whether it's bringing people from public to sport to sell sustainability, creating workable, workable communities, allowing them to get to work, or aging in place. Different communities have different ideas of what affordable housing means, and I'd like to bring together, set up a, a hackathon for people to come up with these ideas, develop tools, develop data sets, and actually give that back to policymakers in government and NGOs to help them make more decisions. So thanks. Hi everybody, my name's Carol. I am with a nonprofit called 48 and 48, and we are looking to come to uh, the Triangle in April. And what we're doing is that we need digital professionals and companies to volunteer to build 48 Triangle nonprofit websites in a 48 hour time frame. And uh, so we can all help you today. Hi, my name is Lori, and um, I was recently inspired by a ride on line bike at um, State with my daughter, and a story on NPR about some high school students that volunteered in the wake of the uh, earthquake in Mexico City to help distribute food and stuff like that. So my uh, topic here is first mile, last mile transportation, and in some way wanting to connect that bike kind of experience and inspiration to solve a bigger problem within the community. Round two. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Mark Hutchinson. Um, I also do software instruction, and if anybody is interested, I'm willing to have a, t have a session or table on data repositories, data and repositories, structured, unstructured data, SQL, NoSQL, graph database, text versus image. You've got to mine data. If you're going to use data, sometimes you've got to mine it. You've got to store it somehow, somewhere, in some format. So that's a possibility. <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Carl. I'm a AmeriCorps VISTA, serving your wonderful community for a year uh, at the Boys and Girls Club, teaching kids how to code. My question, my uh, subject would be, how do you use open data to affect volunteer mobilization? North Carolina ranks, anybody know what ranks uh, North Carolina as far as number of volunteers in uh, the rest of the states? ranks number 37. How can we improve that? How can we get to number, I say we, I've only been here for a couple months. How can we become number one? Open data, 
for volunteer mobilization. Thank you, Chair. Hello, my name is James Clutchfelter. I'm a lighting designer. I'm curious how you would feel if I came to your home and I swapped out all of your lighting without telling you when or what I was going to do. It would probably create a lot of anxiety. Maybe some of you would be grateful, but a lot of you might be angry that I would have the, the gall to uh, change up your whole nighttime environment. So what about street lighting? How, what are the protocols that we use for cities and utility companies to come in and alter that? Uh, so I'm introducing something calling the LEDs are coming. It's a, it's a framework for implementing sensitive change, and it's typical of a lot of scenarios that need a lot more input from the community and buy-in so that we can create these places of identity uh, that are dear to us. If you want your session to be voted on, please make sure your sheet makes it to the back table. Thank you. Hey everyone, me again. Uh, so following up on, on the themes of my talk, I want to do a session about mapping open data's use in Raleigh. So if you need information or you use information that's public information, uh, I want to be able to document that and map it so that we can share some of that as an output. So thanks, mapping open data's use. selfish topic. So we heard last night we were talking about we're redoing the Open Raleigh, we're completely redoing our open data program. So I want to hear from you as far as what you're looking for and, and things that you might want us to change. So selfish topic on Open Raleigh. Actually I have a selfish topic too. Yeah. Uh, that's good. I want to discuss the four challenges that are out there on data.world uh, slash code for NC that were developed by uh, the leadership of Open, uh, NC OpenPass in Wake County, and where we have data curated or ready for teams looking to work on those. Hi, I'm Jim Scarborough. I have worked on a few open source projects and on Wikipedia, and so I want to have a session on pragmatic open source projects. How do you get people to contribute? How do you get stuff can happen. How do you make it work? So let's have a, uh, I'll share what I know. You can share what you know. It'll be fun. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> hey, I'm Will McGuire. I'm a day job. I solve large and small people and organizational problems. And one I thought that some of you may relate to, whether it's open data or not, is uh, overcoming agile with fixed scope, fixed duration, and fixed budget. Yes, I just said that for Agile. <laughs> so, if you'd like to talk about that and how we overcome some of that, go for the session. Hi, everyone. My name is Noah Wissama from the Sunlight Foundation. And my proposed uh, uh, session is how to make our movement inclusive and transformative. Uh, this was inspired by a session that I went to at the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, which is talking about how to make minor how, how to figure out how minorities and everyone benefits from the open data movement or this sort of thing that we've been doing and all working on because it seems a lot of people aren't getting everything that we can get from it. So actually head of community for data.world, which you've heard a couple of times. Uh, we are an open data collaboration platform. Uh, the pithy summary that I like to use is we're the GitHub for open data. Um, and if there's enough interest, I would be happy to do a data.world working session, maybe take the last spreadsheet that you were forced to uh, email around uh, in terms of data collaboration, uh, and put it up on data.world and show how that platform can actually be utilized for something that you are already doing. Uh, and show you the power of the platform, at least that's how I feel. So if you're interested, uh, I'd be happy to do a working session for your laptop. So. Hi, I'm Emily, and I have another selfish topic. Um, I work for the city in affordable housing, and we have 
trouble reaching out to people and engaging in the conversation about affordable housing, whether people need it or whether there's misconceptions in um, higher income areas, um, how to use technology and data to start the conversation and um, get good information out. Hi, I'm Will Hardy. I uh, live a few blocks away, but I work as a strategic planner for the town of Cary. And we just recently had our Cary community plan passed. Uh, took over four years to do. Um, so we're glad it's done, but now we're in the implementation phase. And I'd like to discuss how we can come up with some dashboards or some, some ideas on how to track the success of the plan and be easy to use uh, a way for the community to follow. But we can't do that without help. So I'm actually cheating, and I'm pairing with Janelle on hers. So please vote for her. <laughs> Probably not. Would you know that the tornado warning applied to this place and not some other place like, say, Zebulon, which is also in Wake County? Probably not. Would the tornado tear up the building while you were figuring that out? I don't know. So I've got the Raspberry Pi that solves the problem. Let's talk about it. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Well, again, from the Summit Foundation, and in the bias, I can propose a talk uh, session with you. What private data should be open? You have companies like Google and Waze collecting all sorts of data that I'm sure a lot of you who work in cities would find useful. So I'm wondering what, would you, what data would you like from them so that you can do your job stuff? Yeah, let's do that. That'd be really cool. Coordinate with the homeless population, figure out where they are, and that'd be another place to put these things. So we can make this smart. We can actually make public potties make sense. <laughs> So I think we've got about 40. Uh, we got room for 25. So your votes are going to be really important on how we shape the rest of the afternoon. You will get four votes. What I'd suggest uh, is maybe grab one of the markers. That you're, we have some markers in the back. But if you grab the markers from your table and bring them with you to help us, like you're actually going to help us collect the markers so we don't have to do it later on. So um, you get four votes. You can stack them. If you want. If you really want a session, you can stack all four votes on one session. If you want to spread them out two and two, if you want to spread them out uh, four, each four, uh, four different sessions, um, that's how we're going to do it. We will also look, based after the voting, if there are t similar topics, we will try to marry them together and uh, ask the, pitch of the people who pitched them uh, if they'd be willing to co-present. So I, I think we actually had one that was married without even asking to be married. So they're already got. So Zach, can we get the Janelle and those together? Okay, so they're already together. Um, any questions before we vote? Or Zach, you just want to microphone? Does anybody who pitched still have their sheets? Any sheets at the tables that are not blank? Very good. Okay, any questions? It's okay to ask questions. Because if you have a question, it's probably likely that someone else has that same question. Yes, sir. You get four votes. So kind of one for each time slot. You can stack them if you want. So if you really want that potty one, you can stack all four on that. And, and, uh, <laughs> code of conduct. Uh, 
and, and I'm really happy that Jim Scarlett has quoted up four pitches. Uh, so that's like an annual thing that we have going on. All right, uh, as orderly as we can, uh, line up by the city camp sign here and, and get your voting on. Head to lunch, and then fork the line into two lines.